What's up friends, Liron here. I'm really excited to share something really fun with you today. I know a lot of people have asked to uh, do a full demo from start to finish in real time, uh, meaning you can see the entire drawing and painting process. If you want to, you can definitely just go ahead, save the image reference and paint along with me. So this is what I'm doing today and I'm really happy because I know a lot of people wanted uh, to see that kind of thing and it means the video is really long. It's the entire drawing and painting process uh, based on an image reference, uh, a picture that I took uh, when I was in Paris in Notre Dame. It's one of the gargoyles so I hope you like it and let's get to it. So I am now beginning by just finding the general shapes that compose this uh, scene here. Uh, I'm looking at the black and white uh, version of the picture I took. The colors don't actually matter this much, especially in an image like that where it's all very faded and very light. Um, so it was mostly an old yellowish for the statue and uh, the light areas behind it and there is some uh, just black, um, I'm not even sure what tint it has but it's just black the background. So now I'm sort of uh, building that window by drawing the main line at the bottom and the two lines to the sides and in the middle I will draw the gargoyle itself and what I'm trying to do now is really not be um, confined by the reference because I want to be able to look at an image and just take what I want from it, what interests me from it and just portray that. So this is a good example because there's another statue in the background and I just omitted it entirely. Um, so that's that. Now I'm building the front area, the, the legs, the chest and you'll notice how my shape isn't really that accurate. Uh, it's really interesting because I actually did this uh, exact uh, painting uh, a few months ago. Um, a lot, actually, it was maybe even almost six months ago. And it was before I um, knew anything about watercolor. I was just at the just at the beginning. And I can see how my washes were really uneven and uh, many mistakes, the values weren't well defined enough. So it's interesting to see the result that, uh, the, how it turns out now in comparison. Um, now um, I'm drawing based on areas of darkness and uh, brightness. So the line on the wing that I just did, the inner line on the wing is very important because it will tell us where the value changes from the very bright uh, sorry, light um, outwards part of the wing when compared to the inner side of the wing. And I'm just trying to get in the very basics before I go in and actually add all the feathers and stuff like that. Um, so that's that. I have a bit of a mess on my desk. There are quite a few uh, test pages that I use there. So I'm now going in and getting some of the details for the head of the gargoyle. And what I like about uh, drawing statues in general is that it allows you... Um, it's very forgiving because especially a statue like that, like this one, that's not a real creature. It's an imaginary creature and you can sort of play with it and change it. I changed it a bit. It wasn't really deliberately because I actually just wasn't, I guess, accurate enough. Um, but still, you can kind of change stuff around and it will still uh, look good and look uh, believable if you get the texture and even the color right. Um, yeah. Now we have, um, again, I'm drawing areas of different values. So there is a sharp value change near the eye and uh, nostril that I just got in. So it's important to indicate those parts as well. Now just trying to get the shape of the wings better. 
Um, I actually, in retrospect, could have made them a little more well defined, but it's good because uh, sometimes I tend to <laughs> go overboard and just make stuff look too uh, overworked. And it's good. I'm happy this time I could sort of let go. Uh, you do want to indicate, like what I did just now, some hint of the feathers. So I kind of broke it. And I will later on add some more uh, breakings to it. And now this is line represents the dark area that's just under the wing. So it's really important for me to see that area um, just to make sure that when I put on the first wash or the first few washes and layers of watercolor, I can still tell where to pass that line. Um, now, we actually have a very interesting structure with this one because because of the window at the back, just a black window. It's not really a window, but it's like a black rectangle, uh, rectangular shape at the back. You can really um, go uh, work freely with the watercolor. You don't really have to worry too much about stepping outside of the line, stuff like that. Uh, just because uh, you can later on, you just do um, what you call... Um, I forgot the name, like uh, negative painting. Yeah, you just paint around it. <laughs> it's just forgot the, the word. Um, you just paint around it and you make the edges look sharp. Um, so now uh, adding some of the feathers and you want to sort of get the effect of the rotation of the statue. So at the front or rather near the edges, whether it be the right edge or the left edge, the feathers look more squashed or thinner and in the center you get them a little thicker um, and that way you get this sort of a curving effect just one way to convey uh, that it has uh, volume you'll notice how I also uh, darkened the area under the wing a bit um, I don't normally do that but all of this drawing actually is a lot darker than what I usually do. And it's because, first off, I want you to be able to see it uh, better. But also because I decided um, that lately I want, I want to work on my ability to actually make a preparatory sketch or drawing that is fairly accurate. Uh, and I've, I'll tell you why. It's really a matter of approach. Some people prefer to uh, have the preparatory sketch really minimal. Uh, but other people go overboard and add too many details. And when you add too many details, it kind of makes you feel like you're just coloring inside the lines, which is not good. But uh, the opposite is also not ideal because I found myself really drawing some minimal details and I was just lacking the guidance. So my focus now is to actually create enough guidelines so that I know what I'm doing which is why the guidelines here are a little sharper, a little stronger than uh, what they usually uh, are, how they usually are. Uh, and just there's more of them, more of the details in. Uh, I'm trying to, you know, even though I add in a lot of guidelines, to still not uh, confine myself too much to their shape, meaning I can take some liberties with the watercolor later. Uh, now we have this uh, area at the back, uh, the edge of the... There's just two walls... Um, from uh, with the same sort of color like the statue and what I want to do is sort of get the effect uh, of a curving a curving effect on the edge of it so you'll notice I'm using different very subtle curves there and when I go up it'll curve to the other side so you see the curve at the top uh, looks more like the top of a circle and the curves at the bottom look more like the curves of the bottom of the circle but it's really subtle because the difference is subtle if you look at the reference image and uh, just a note on uh, drawing and painting from black and white reference so it's really easier to begin with black and white and what I like about it is the freedom it gives you with the colors it doesn't confine you to a specific color and you're not tempted to try and mimic the exact colors of the image uh, which I find confines my creativity and just makes me feel, you know, like I'm limited in some way. And this is uh, really a good way to not feel that way. So just by uh, drawing uh, 
or painting rather from a black and white reference. It's just a really good way. Just adding some final touches and we can soon move on to the painting, which was actually shot with me talking uh, in real time. I like this um, recording after the fact. And just a few more details down uh, next to the uh, this uh, stone wall kind of thing. And we're really done with the, the drawing stage here. Adding the little, little cheekbone <laughs> indication. It's really visible in the reference image. And as I said, feel free to save it and paint along with me. Okay, so now starts the part that is actually speaking live for me. I mean, not live, but at least real time. Um, so what I'm going to do is paint this and hopefully you got down the uh, drawing process and uh, maybe you were even able to do something similar or something uh, that looks even just like that. Um, I'm actually curious to see the results um, or to hear about your results. And what I'm doing now, because it's also uh, real time for me, so it, it's going to be a little slower uh, because I'm not cutting out the parts of me mixing paint and stuff like that so forgive me about that um, now what I'm doing is using two uh, colors for this one I'll be using uh, the, the uh, French ultramarine here and sepia okay these are the two colors I want to limit myself to just these two and I'm gonna create a mixture that is still quite uh, weak here and just start painting over this and because we have a dark background here uh, there's not too much to worry about in terms of the, you know, how accurate you are or stuff like that. So I'm trying to mix the paints, not just on the palette, but, but also let them mix on the paper here. So I'm just going to use one of my test pages here, just to make sure it's light enough. And I'm going to start with a bit of a bluish uh, tone here. And it may look a little dark, um, but it's not. It's going to be okay because it's going to dry up much lighter than it looks like now. And I'm just uh, dabbing the color here freely, not worrying too much. And I may even leave some parts here white, depending on what I decide. And I'm just going to drop the paint down here like that. And add some darker values here to get this area under the wing and to get it darker I'm just adding in some more uh, sepia the brownish color like that and you'll see that getting the variation can really help to make this look just better I'm gonna get some dark here or inside the inside part of the mouth. Now here it lights up, so I'm just gonna take some water in my brush and just pull down the paint, I'm not going to add anything else. And towards the left, and this is something, this is a little different from how I usually approach these kinds of things, so I hope the result will be uh, good, or at least interesting, I really have no idea. And I wanna get all of that actually, I want to get all of that painted. Let's get it a little more sepia brown towards the bottom here. I'm leaving some areas white. Uh, it's okay. Here and there. And don't forget that it's all about uh, the relationship between the the values meaning if you have something that now looks really dark wait until there's a background that is really dark and it'll just make it look much brighter okay so uh, you don't need to worry too much about uh, if stuff look a little too dark now it's perfectly okay actually um, it's gonna be good this is the thing that I recently learned to accept with watercolor uh, that you kind of have to accept whatever the first layer brings to the table <laughs> um, and just work with it 
and get out the details that you want by darkening some other areas and stuff like that. Uh, this is why it's really recommended to start light uh, with watercolor in general and just even when drawing and when painting it's just a uh, good uh, good practice to have to just get used to starting a little light and now there there are some areas here that I want to keep completely white actually as well not here but rather here so I'm just going to skip them I'm just going to darken that area here as well as here because these areas are going to be much darker and also down here we have this uh, shape inside the fence there's uh, not a fence rather a wall a small wall and it has these sort of uh, patterns on it and like that so the inner part of the pattern is significantly darker and we also have this sort of a rocky thing going across here that also makes it uh, darker here we also have a darker part and this is really, I'm just trying to, let's get some of that away, I'm just trying to really see the reference and just get it to match the value with less regard to the color. Okay, now we can move on to the walls here. Now what I'm going to do is make these walls a little, there's like the black window thingy here and I'm gonna make these walls a little lighter than the the statue because I want to make it at least uh, still be a part of the uh, center of attention so area focus area of focus so I'm just going to mix in a paler mix I'm gonna make it really pale let me show you um, right here it's a little hard to see because with the sunlight again it's a uh, pretty strong sunlight and I just thought I'd, I'd use it to my advantage so I'm just keeping it full light because otherwise you're gonna have stripes and that's not gonna be good so I'm just using a very very light mix I'm gonna add even more water but the thing is that you really want to be careful about is to uh, not make it too wet so that you lose control because that can suck as well <laughs> So I'm keeping it light, but still not making it way too wet so that I lose control over it. And you can see how with the contrast of the white here that I forgot to mention, but leave this uh, white area, it's really good. So it's in, in um, together with it, it really makes the statue stay at the front, at the center here. Um, I have this weird issue with my camera. I mean, it's not an issue, but it just stops recording and creates a new video. Uh, after some time, it automatically c cuts the video. So what I'm going to do is probably do a deliberate cut soon. And, and then come back and continue. Okay, so I'm just going to finish this part here. And then I'm just going to uh, deliberately cut it. And I'll be back in a second. Okay, sorry about that. I'm back. <laughs> Uh, so I didn't do anything else, left it just like it was and it's a good thing that I did it quite quickly because what I want to do now is get some wet in wet here and hopefully it's not uh, too dry the paint here because there is a darker area right here that hints that this is a curved um, sort of um, just a curved texture on the wall and you see how it kind of helps to hint that you see it feels like it's turning a bit um, so you want to make sure one thing that I learned about wet and wet that's really important it's critical uh, to remember because otherwise you're just not gonna get the result you want and I may make this mistake later on here and you'll be able to see it live uh, you want to make sure that when you put in color into onto the wet area it's less wet than the wet area and the reason why is because if it's more wet you're gonna get the water is gonna push all the pigment 
aside, uh, outside or outwards rather, and you'll just get the flowers of doom, as I like to call them. Uh, the, I'll, I, may, I may share an example here for maybe another uh, another painting I made. The flowers of doom are, man, you just want to avoid them. <laughs> it just looks bad. So yeah, uh, the sun is moving a bit, so hopefully you can still see pretty well uh, what I'm doing here. Um, now what we want to do is do this other side here. Pretty much the same thing. Uh, to create a contrast, we can kind of try, uh, 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 let's say, a color contrast. We can try to get a more uh, bluish because we've been a bit gray here. So we can try and get it to be a little more bluish. And just getting it really quickly. No need to fuss about that side too much. It's really not the center of attention here. And I'm just going to use that same uh, value and maybe get it a little darker towards the bottom by just adding a little more blue. Uh, this is what I did. By the way, my uh, desk is a mess. I hope it doesn't interrupt your focus. I have a lot of test pages here and uh, my iPad just for the reference, stuff like that. So uh, now what we want to do is start darkening the stuff that need to be darker. Uh, so let's take a moment to examine this actually. Uh, this area obviously needs to be significantly darker. We're gonna get that uh, later on, but uh, for now I want to focus on the statue itself. So the areas that are darker, as you can see, uh, are under the wing here. We have a strong contrast with this part. And also here inside the mouth, it can be a little darker. And towards the bottom here, we have a lot of darker spots. So let's get those in. And the way to do that is just to create a stronger mix. So I'm mixing here. Let me show you again. I'm mixing some of the French Ultramarine and Sepia. Same colors all throughout this painting. Okay, it's the exact same colors uh, because I want to keep it simple for me. Uh, it's really, it just becomes harder the moment you add a third uh, third color uh, from what I noticed about me and it's still really good for me to just work with two colors because it's still a challenge basically. So I am now created, I've now created that darker mix and you can see here um, and it's I think stronger on the sepia side. So I'm just going to start adding it to the places I see fit. Now, in the beginning, the brush is loaded, so you want to use that uh, for the darker, darkest areas. And then you want to work your way to uh, places where you want <coughs> um, less of an extreme contrast with what you already have on paper. So this is what I'm doing now, basically. I'm starting with the darkest uh, strip here of shadow and just going all the way close to the edge. Now I'm gonna dilute this mixture a bit and uh, empty my brush from too much water because if I don't then it's not gonna fare well with what I already have here. And now I'm going to just paint around those feathers and leave some of them white, which is good, uh, a good way to convey that they're here, to convey their shape. And you see I've gone a little lighter on the mixture as well, because we're moving away from the darkest spot here. And I'm not really making a lot of use of wet and wet in this uh, painting, unfortunately, just with the initial layer I did. So I have to say I really like uh, when you have the chance to do that uh, because this is what watercolor is all about and so I feel kind of guilty sometimes if if my painting doesn't have a strong uh, sort of use of that but you know <laughs> whatever not every painting painting is gonna be done uh, the same way for sure there are many ways to to go about doing anything and a lot of the different results that people make actually stem from the fact that they're just using uh, different approaches and different techniques. Uh, I tend to uh, like the more traditional way of doing watercolors. And it's funny because I'm not, it, it's not indicated in my work always because I'm still learning. So, but I like doing it the, the, the old fashioned way and 
to really use the medium as I think it should be used with a lot of wets and wets, wet and wets and um, a lot of things that basically use the natural characteristics of the water. Um, I don't really like works that um, sort of make weird use of the medium. Uh, and there's a lot of them and some of my works look like that as well. So <laughs> I'm also a part of that, but I'm working towards changing that. So, And it's hard to explain, but uh, what I'm talking about is works that may look overworked, overprocessed, um, not even, uneven. Yeah, there's a word for that. <laughs> Ron, remember, there's a word for it. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I hope you understand what I mean. It's just making use of it, not, let's say, uh, like acrylic paint. So we, uh, acrylics are very different from watercolor and oil as well. So if you paint something using watercolor, but you work at it like you would with acrylics or stuff like that, it's just uh, it, it's just losing some of the magic of watercolor. And it's a shame when that happens. So now that I have a little less of a darker value, I can start pouring it in in the parts that are a little um, not that dark, but still require darkening. So it's here and under the chest of the bird and also uh, what I'm gonna do is blend it in so that it's not so glaringly uh, contrasted with the uh, here so uh, what you do is wet the brush clean it uh, wipe it on a towel and then go ahead along the contours along the area of the paint and you just blend it in with the surrounding okay so now we have this uh, much more beautiful gradation and I think I want to do the same on the left. Uh, so maybe I'll take a risk here. I have no idea what will happen. So I'm just pouring in some very wet paint, really taking a risk, but it's a part of it. And just coming with a drier brush just to get that gradation going from left to right as well. Uh, hopefully it looks good. And maybe I'll make this part a little darker. And you can see I can just pour in the paint. And it's a little less wet than what's on paper. So I don't get the flowers of doom. Uh, which is good. We don't want that. The legs are surprisingly um, lighter than you would imagine. They're not really heavily shaded. And I just mentioned heavily shaded and the sun went under the clouds ah, but it's still good I think uh, natural light um, so now here I also kind of forgot about this there's this feather is also pretty uh, clear by the way it's really hot so um, I'm used to the, the the cold because we've had a few cold days here and it's just because the sun was directly on me I'm Almost sweating, just al almost sweating. Uh, like that, blended it in. So now we're done with most of the darker areas on the gargoyle. And what we want to do is darken some part of the eye here. Because I noticed there is this uh, area here around that helps with the hollow, creepy <laughs> look of this creature. Like that so I'm gonna get that in and also here under the the inside of the mouth needs to be actually considerably darker so let me mix really darker mix here I think that one of the biggest challenges uh, with watercolor is just understanding how dark it's gonna look like on paper or once it dries um, because when you mix it on the palette, you don't get a very good indication of that. You see, uh, this is the super dark mixture I just made. It's not even that super dark, but uh, it's hard to tell how it's gonna, what it's gonna look like exactly uh, when you're done, but you just have to work with it. Uh, let me uh, take care of some stuff and I'll be back in a moment and we can do the background here and it will really bring out the contours uh, of the gargoyle, okay? Okay, we are reaching the end of this painting. Really cool. Uh, the sun is out again. <laughs> and what we're basically uh, left with is this part that we want to get a little darker. 
and a little <laughs> considerably darker. We're going to ignore any details in that, in that area because we don't need them, it doesn't matter, it doesn't add to the painting in any way. And also get some uh, darker details here and on the wing which I noticed were kind of missing. Uh, so let me go ahead and actually start with the missing details. We're gonna save the uh, we're gonna save the background to the end. Um, so let's mix this. Uh, this is good, I think, um, because I noticed that this uh, feels a little detached here. I just wanna convey that there are uh, wings here as well. And um, also maybe here at the bottom. And then just soften the edge with some uh, dry brush. Uh, it may not seem like a major difference, but it is. So I think it'll make it look uh, a little better. And now we can actually go ahead and move on to the bottom where there are some more dark areas that I want to get in. I really need to um, work on just being a little more organized, I think. It's really important with uh, watercolor. Um, just to work as organized as possible. Because you really... Uh, there are so many things that are kind of outside of your control. And you just want to make sure that everything that is under your control, uh, you you took care of. And because things happen really fast on the canvas, basically, and you don't have too much time to think about what you're doing. And it's really important to when you bring the brush to the to the paper to sort of have an idea of what you are going to do with it and not just blindly go at it, uh, which is something that uh, happens to everyone. I still, uh, from time to time, think back at a painting that I don't like so much or maybe even at a part of a painting that uh, is less good than it could have been. And just my um, conclusion is that I could have just uh, put some more time and effort into planning it. And if it's something that you can control, then definitely, you know, just try to control it. Uh, that's the best advice for that, I think. Um, now I'm mixing a very, very, very dark mixture here. Let me show you, taking lots of sepia and lots of the French ultramarine. And I'm going to create something, I hope, as dark as I can. I'm not going to use a larger brush uh, because I don't really like the larger brushes that I have. Although I could have, uh, I prefer not to, and so I think this will do. And I'm just going to start filling that area up. See, it's not dark enough. So I'm going to add some more, because I want it to be really high contrast. Because that's how it is, basically, in the reference. And for such large backgrounds, um, if you can vary the color a bit, it's a good idea because it just well it actually depends on the exact situation for for this example I actually wouldn't necessarily vary it too much because there's so much going on at the front that I don't want to take away from that but in many cases I'd sort of move uh, from one color to another just to keep it fresh. Uh, what I do now is actually add a little more. What I'm doing now, I'm adding more blue to the mixture. So you will see the difference here. Hopefully you can see how it turned a little uh, bluer. I'm going to try and edit it uh, in my uh, video editing software just to make sure that because of this I, I don't think I ever recorded with such a strong sunlight. So just to make sure that uh, the values are, uh, the colors are rather showing uh, properly because I have a feeling that you won't be able to tell too much of the difference here and it's too bad if you won't so I'm just going to give that a look and see if I can improve it. Um, I was also uh, recommended to actually do some 
editing uh, after recording just to bring out the colors more and it was really good advice actually uh, so now I'm gonna take care of that bottom part and you see it's uh, quite even which is good uh, you can't uh, get it to be 100% even sometimes uh, because especially now I'm working in such a strong sunlight that the paint just dries really fast which is a uh, major uh, disadvantage if if you're working in direct sunlight, strong sunlight. I read about it in uh, Joseph Zbukvich's book, also an amazing watercolor artist and he also talks about that, to not paint directly in the sun because it's just it's going to uh, give you, first off, you won't always be able to read the values and the, and the color properly. Uh, I'm not sure uh, how true it is now because I feel like I do have a grasp on what it looks like. Uh, but definitely the issue with the paint drying so fast. Um, yeah, so we're basically almost done here. I'm really excited for this year, I have to say, because... Um, I'm really happy that I understood what things matter for me uh, the most in terms of what I want to talk about and what I want to provide on this uh, channel. And so you will see a lot of uh, different content. I am planning, as I said, to keep the pure uh, art how-tos uh, here for sure uh, because it's really important for me. But also there will be a lot of uh, more advice on... Uh, business and I don't know even marketing and uh, platforms for uh, for artists to note that can really help because I feel like uh, there is a lack of information in this uh, area and for me for sure you know you're building uh, something that's really yours and it's really just you and your art and it's really a big challenge of how you get that in front of people and what's the right way to do that and for people like me that are i'm really business oriented and i really care about that so in the end of the day you know i enjoy making art and i love making these videos that i earn basically nothing for uh, but i also it's also important for me to uh, make money from something that i like you know i don't want to uh, feel like i uh, had to do something different for what i like and then uh, as a side hobby do this do the art i want to to mix the two and so for me it was really important to sort of understand how i combine uh, these two to make something that's really of my own and that people can really benefit from and will also make me money and so I'm actually really excited to share some of this stuff uh, even though I'm definitely not like a millionaire or something I'm not like uh, f still I think full-fledged like businessman um, because it's really the size that I think um, the size of your business and the experience you have so I'm really just starting out basically <laughs> this is what I'm trying to say I'm just starting out but uh, I learned a lot and I think a lot of people can benefit from it um, so uh, this is almost it I just want to add some shadows under this ledge here like that because this area is a little darker and I don't want to overwork this part actually so let's keep it like that and maybe what is glaring here I think oh, too much water you see that's the potential for flower of doom <laughs> I didn't dry it enough I have to practice uh, you know talking and uh, painting simultaneously is a challenge so um, now I just want to add a little bit of uh, paint here uh, to this part because it just stares at me and it says man you didn't even paint me yeah, I'm just the white of the paper I want to get some color so <laughs> I'm just gonna add a little bit of color here just to keep it from being entirely white and I think we are nearly done here. So basically two things left. Uh, one is to sign it, which I always do because it's part of me learning to take pride uh, in my work. I'm so, uh, so uh, critical of my work. Uh, critical, is that the word? I'm not sure. Um, like I love to criticize my own work. 
and it's sometimes hard for me to find things that I like about it. Even when other people tell me that something's amazing, I sometimes just don't see it. And I'm training myself, so part of it is to actually feel pride for what you do and sign it like a grown-up. So <laughs> this is what I'm doing now. The sun is gone. And yeah, you can't probably see this uh, really well because of the angle of the camera here. Uh, but hopefully you could with the rest of this painting. And I really hope you enjoyed this one. I will now take off the masking tape here and it's really gonna make it look, I think, a lot better. It always does uh, when you get the clear uh, lines here. that and that's it friends I hope you enjoyed this one uh, I hope you got a little tangled with the tape here uh, so I hope you enjoyed this one and uh, you learned something new from it uh, a lot of people wanted me to do something like that that's like the full process and this is even with a reference that I took so it's really good no copyright risks no nothing uh, so I really hope you enjoyed this one um, if you did, um, good, because people have been asking for a real-time thing for a long time. Um, and don't forget to subscribe for more videos and also to follow me on Snapchat and Instagram. I'll put the usernames uh, in a moment on the screen. And I want to really thank you, uh, everyone who's been sticking around and following my stuff. Uh, it's really, really, it means a lot to me, actually. It's my oxygen, <laughs> like uh, the, the comments and stuff that people uh, say. It really helps me uh, and motivates me. So thank you so much. Uh, you're really the best. And I'll see you again in another video. Uh, until then, take care.